Team Keep It Clean, it's been a lot of fun being able to actually do questions from subscribers while NFL free agency has slowed down a little bit. Still a lot going on, but it's slowed down a little bit, so we've had an opportunity to do these. Uh, but what question from subscribers is, is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video like this. You want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you don't have to do that. You can just send it directly on Patreon. You want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron? You can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. If you don't, that's fine too. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. We got some great questions like we always do. Let's jump into it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. First question on this episode came from my boy Daryl. He said, EDC, the king of cap. One more question for you and team. Keep it clean. Do you think Lamar would sign a new deal if they traded for DK Metcalf? Would he sign a new deal so the Ravens could free up money to resign both DK and Hollywood? Because like you know, I know the cap is cap. So would Lamar resign if they added a DK Metcalf? Would they resign uh, if would he resign if it was to create more money? to sign both Hollywood and DK Metcalf? Well, um, no, because I think that seeing would be believing because somebody can tell you something. They can be like, look, if you do this, then I'm going to do this for you. And I'm going to do that for you. And I'm going to do that for you. I got you. Trust me. But a lot of times it's happened. And I'm sure we all got personal experiences where we do whatever for that person and the person doesn't deliver. So for Lamar Jackson, at this point in his career, under the fifth year option, I think he just really wants the Ravens to truly deliver first. Uh, for your scenario that you spoke about specifically, I think that he would want to actually see them re-sign a Hollywood first or see them extend the DK first and, and see that stuff happen first before he was like, all right. Let's get it. Next question came from Trey Five. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your loved ones are strong, happy, and healthy. Oh, I like that. I appreciate that. The strong part. But yeah, happy and healthy for sure. Appreciate it, man. He said, my question is about consistency at the center position. I always think back to 2020 uh, when we had struggles at center. Was it just 2020? <laughs> but anyway, he said, man. He said, maybe it is the pessimistic side of me, but some parts of me thinks that Lamar should have consistency at the center position, just like the consistencies in the coaching staff. I, I agree. I think everybody would agree with that because like the, the, the center, the quarterback exchange, that literally happens on every single offensive play, no matter what, unless it's like a direct snap to a running back or something. But the center to quarterback exchange happens every play. So you want to make sure that they have a great relationship. And if centers just keep flip-flopping, tossing and turning and all that stuff, and there's no consistency, then as we have seen, it can get a little rough. Um, but the Ravens, man, you think about it. The Ravens have actually been, when it's come to the center position, it's been a lot of uh, turnover over the years. Like, and, and, I mean, yeah, it's been a lot of turnover over the years. Uh, they've been through it. Remember, um, who was the guy that they got from the Bucks? I know his name started like with a J. Oh, oh, Jeremy Zuda. That remember him? Jeremy Zuda, Ryan Jensen, uh, Bradley Bozeman, Matt Skura, Pat McCary, uh, Tristan Colon Castillo. Um, there's been more too. Uh, my, Matt Burke. I know that's a little while back, but um, Matt Burke. Um, anyway, let's get back to the question. We ain't going down memory lane. He says, so far, Lamar, oh, I, sh I should have read this. He says, so far, Lamar has had Scora, McCary, Col Colon, Castillo, and Bozeman all snapping him in less than four years. I wish we had someone like J.C. Treader or Tyler Lindenbaum snapping to him consistently for five to ten years. But what do you think? Uh, yeah, con consistency is key. And, and consistency is really key with anything that you do. Um, now, depending on how that consistency is, the cons consistency can be a bad thing. Because if you're doing something over and over and over and you're not having success with it, then it could be time for a change. But as far as the center to quarterback exchange, consistency is everything. And that will just make the job for everybody that much smoother. 
<laughs> this dude says, <laughs> he said, last stop before G roll has to G go. Next question came from my boy Tag13. He said, from Ty, what's up, man? Hope you're doing well. I've watched every Ravens game this season, and despite all these injuries, I feel like the coaching let the team down when there were opportunities to win, and I just hope it does not drag on into next season. And if the play calling does not improve with a healthy team, Greg Roman is gone by week nine. These games next season need to be taken very seriously. QB draw on third and eight is not gonna fly <laughs> and i think either t martin or keith williams should become oc they already improved the wide receiver room big time and i think we should draft drizzy drake london i love that part i i, I love it again first three rounds ravens taking the receiver for sure they get somebody like drake no oh, yeah, yeah anyway um i think we should draft drake restructure a few contracts and make a few cute Oh, I'll make a few cuts. He put cute. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? Like a cute deal? But uh, make a few cuts and sign Lamar to his deal. That's a whole lot of money to get enough quality depth at each and every position. They don't have to be big superstars, just guys that get in there and do their job. Oh, they, they can still use some, some big superstars because a superstar is a superstar for a reason. They're a game changer. But anyway, he said... um. Not just bodies with no experience uh, or super old vets at the end of their careers. And a new offensive coordinator could have a balance of run plays with a balanced run game so we're not one-dimensional. Uh, David Ajabo in the second round with a quality edge vet who can get seven to eight sacks. Mm, sound like you're talking about maybe Jadavion Clowney. Um, with David's rehab, his injury, uh, he wouldn't be rushed in since we have quality depth. Uh, he can come back at his pace when he's fully ready and has a chip on his shoulder to play at his best. Imagine Adafi and David playing mad. That would not be good for those tackles. And that right there would help the interior of the pass rush. One-on-ones for Justin Matabike and others. So, yeah, um, the interior and the exterior of the pass rush, they can help each other for sure. But if both of those are clicking, then that helps out the linebackers. That helps out the secondary. Um, and it sounds like from co a conclusion of your whole question, it just sounds like you want everybody to help everybody out and make everybody's job easier. Next question came from my guy, Cam. He said, to start off, love the videos, dog. Keep grinding. I love watching you. Hey, appreciate it, Cam. Thank you. Uh, he said, my question of the day, should the Ravens sign two-time Super Bowl champion Jason Pierre Paul? Well, um, let me tell you a few, ra a few reasons that the Ravens would sign Jason Pierre Paul. Why? Because they're the Florida Ravens, and he is from Deerfield Beach. Um, so that's one reason. <laughs> <laughs> he is a veteran. He's a he's been around the game for a little while, man. Wow, he been he been playing for a little minute, and he was a two time NFC Super Bowl champion because he did it with the Giants and then he did it with the Bucks. And Jason Pierre Paul, like he's been like, man, he just been he been hanging around. He been hanging around the league for a minute, and but yeah, this would be a very Ravens like signing. Um, I, I would I would not be surprised if they made a signing like that. I, I really wouldn't um, because, it, again, it's very Raven. Um, he is a, he's a veteran. He's somebody, again, been around the game for a while. Um, so, yeah, something like that, it, it, it would not shock me. Next question came from my boy Devon. He said, is Lamar Jackson the Ray Lewis of the offense? I say yes, he is, and that's why we, he hasn't signed the deal yet. I feel like he's letting the front office grab everybody they can, and right before the season start, he will sign. How so, you say it, at EDC, every dollar counts. I disagree. As far as him signing right before the season, I, I don't think it's going to happen. You never know, but I, I just I don't see it happening. Uh, but is he the Ray Lewis of the offense? Well, um, Ray Lewis, um, the impact that he has on the team, how the team, they go as he goes, um, how he is. He's not the outspoken leader that Ray Lewis was. Um uh, <laughs> I don't think anybody is like Ray Lewis was in. Boy, for like when you think about the Ravens and anytime, and it's again, it's unfair because like especially with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, every single Ravens player that plays their positions is always going to be compared to them no matter what, and it's not fair to them. But when it comes to leadership, whenever you talk about Ravens leadership, every single Ravens leader is going to be compared to Ray Lewis, and it's like. It's not fair because it, it's, it's extremely hard to live up to something like that just because of the way that he did it. Ray Lewis was always yelling and screaming and dancing, and, ah, doing all that stuff. And he is a lot of fun to watch. Very entertaining. Um, but it's going to be hard for somebody, anybody, 
because everybody's leadership is going to be different from that. Like nobody's leadership is going to be like Ray Lewis leadership was. And Lamar certainly isn't. Um, so is, is he Ray Lewis like that? No. But as far as his impact on the team, his impact on the city, his impact on the league, then yeah. Next question came from Cynthia. She said, just want to get your thoughts on something I've been thinking about during our past <laughs> losing season. Would you love to see players stay away from the camera after a score? I think a game face uh, and all about business is in order. I remember watching the game and seeing them in front of the camera and still losing the game. I think you're talking about the um, Marlon Humphrey. He got a pick. Uh, oh, and that was very frustrating for me, too. Because I like me, I disagree with the first part as far as would you love to see players stay away from the camera after a score? No, I disagree. These guys are they, they, they live in their dream in the NFL and they score. You're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to be happy about that. You don't want to see them score a touchdown and be like, OK, I will go back to the sideline now. I am not going to have any fun. No, you want them to have fun. You want them to be enjoying themselves. Remember 2019? I didn't see nobody complaining about the Ravens being on in the camera. Lamar on the sideline. Eating bananas and stuff. He went with the shades on. Ravens dancing. Everybody slide. Mark Ingram sliding into the end zone and all that. They were having the time of their lives. But that's because they were winning. They were 14 and 2. They won 12 straight games. They were going crazy. But if they're if if you're losing, like I think it, it, it all depends on context. If you are, if you out here getting whooped, and then you go smile in the camera after you make a pick, oh yeah, yeah, I did that. No, no you're getting whooped. You should have been using all that same energy to be better so you wouldn't be in the situation you're in right now. But so it, it, it's all about context for me. Uh, but anyway, continuing. Uh, she said, I remember watching the game and seeing them in front of the camera and still losing the game. My first thought was all that showboating kept you from focusing on winning the whole game. <laughs> Thank you uh, for all you do. We truly enjoy the content. Appreciate you, Cynthia. Thank you. Next question came from my boy Kevin B. He said, I just think it's time for our guys to get players and play at their positions. Sometimes they put a little too much on these young guys' plate. All of them can't handle it. I mean, you wouldn't give a newborn a steak. Oh, I, I love the analogy. Love it. Some people probably would, though. As uh, far as bringing in new guys, I'm all for it. Get as many as you can and let them fight it out. My biggest concern is the offensive line. Let's not forget the reason for Lamar Jackson's 2019 season. He had a line, and it fell off when Marshall Yonder retired. And that's the key player that we did not replace. So if we do or don't upgrade a wide receiver, we still need to get that fixed. Our offensive line has been getting downgraded since Yonder's been gone. Peace and blessings to you and your fam and everyone out there. Appreciate that, Kev. Uh, yeah, the offensive line is um it, it definitely needs to uh, remain a priority for the Ravens. Now, um, I just don't want people to continue to get it twisted because I still see it. I see it every day where they're, they're the conversations where people are having where it's like um somebody says, oh, I want a playmaker at wide receiver. Ravens need to get a playmaker at wide receiver. Then somebody will respond, but what about the offensive line? You can do more than one thing. Ravens can do more than one thing. So offensive line is is and should definitely be one of the Ravens priorities but it also should not be the only thing and it hopefully won't be the only thing that they do the <laughs> next question came from my boy Mike Reed he said Mike Reed here Ken A. Reed lol hope all is well with you and the fam Everything is good, my guy. Hope you and your uncle Ed doing good, man. He said, quick question. Do you think with the addition of Morgan Moses, do you see us sliding Pat McCarry back at center next year? Can't remember how much his deal is, but you don't pay people to sit on the bench. Take away a couple bad snaps in 2020, and he was pretty decent. Um, I think, oh, and really quick, let me finish this next part. He said, I really don't see us drafting an offensive lineman with the 14th pick. I really believe we go corner or edge. Say bless and keep God first. Appreciate that. I'm out. Um, appreciate that, man. I, uh, I think that Patrick McCary is their sort of their backup plan just in case things don't fall their way. Uh, what I mean when I say that is I think with Patrick McCary, I think that the Ravens, they got some offensive linemen, possibly even some centers that they're looking at that they hope to strike a deal with or hope to draft. Um, and if all else fails, if, if everything doesn't go their way, then they'll be like, all right, okay, cool. We're just going to have Patrick McCarry back there. We'll just put him back there. He's played center before. Uh, and yeah, we all remember 2019, man. I, I know like a lot of people are scarred from the playoff game, as you should be, because you never want anything like that to happen, ever. It's, and it's just, it's rough. 
Um, but with Patrick M- McCary, he um, he did he has shown that he can play center. Uh, he's shown that he can play center at a high level. Um, one bad snap, even though it was a terrible snap, it was and it it pretty much ended that game because uh, it took Lamar out. Um, but he he can play. That's not your first option. Um, I, I would think that Ravens will want to go into this season with Patrick McCarry being like the ultimate backup, sort of like they were trying to do with James Hurst. Um, but I just uh, I think that he is their backup plan. And I, I actually, th- in all honesty, I actually think Ravens, um, they, I, I think they actually, in their minds, they may have their offensive line set already. And the reason I say that is because, and, and of course, the draft could change everything. We'll really see the answer to that question after the draft. Um, but I think they are going to be banking on a healthy Ronnie Stanley. We'll see. Again, it's still early. It's still early. And the draft, again, could change all of that. But uh, left tackle Ronnie Stanley, right tackle um, Morgan Moses, left guard could be uh, Ben Cleveland or Tyree Phillips. Um, and right guard, of course, Kevin Zeitler. And then center could be Patrick McCary or Tristan Colon Castillo. Um, but we'll see. Because obviously, like, I know everybody talks, J.C. Treader, J.C. Treader, J.C. Treader. And as of this recording, like, it's, it's 1054, Friday, March 25th. Ain't been no J.C. Treader at all, man. Yeah, we ain't heard about no visit. We ain't heard about no interest. We ain't heard about no signing. He's still obviously out there. And, you know, Ravens ain't worried about no comp picks this year. I mean, because it ain't like anybody even qualified for a comp pick for them this year. So, I, that's what it's looking like to me. But, again, the draft could change everything. Next question came from Numa. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope everything is going well with your family and Pookie. Hey, appreciate that. Shout out to Pookie. I'm very excited about the return of Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey for our secondary, but... I'm also very worried about the Ravens banking on them being healthy for the whole year. They're both coming off of season-ending injuries, so high-level play is not guaranteed. Do you think Ravens should draft a cornerback at 14 just in case something does go wrong or they just aren't uh, playing like they were pre-injury? Thanks for taking the time to answer my question. I'm looking forward to seeing these Ravens raise that Lombardi soon. (sighs) Well, if they're going to be doing that, then we'll talk about that later. But anyway, um... If they drafted a cornerback at 14, I don't think it would be a surprise to anybody, uh, especially given the situation. And, and Ravens, they know better than anybody, especially in the secondary. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, even though I would actually rather them go a uh, big playmaking wide receiver there. Um, or, well, we, yeah, I would rather them do that. Um, but they, they're going to have a lot of options, especially since they're going to be at that spot in the draft. Uh, Tavon Young is actually still out there, too. We have heard nothing on him. Nobody's bitten. Maybe the Ravens might be like, hey, you know what, Tay-Tay? Come back on a little cheap one-year deal. Because we just, hey, we, we want you back. We feel like you can still play. We know you can still play. It'll be a one-year deal. So, hey, just in case something does go south, then okay, it's one year. That's that. Um, but I, I, I just feel like the Ravens, they... And you could sign a veteran, too. You could sign a veteran. You could draft a rookie. You, like, you have options in the secondary. So I don't think a, a drafting a cornerback, I don't think it's a lot, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. I don't think really anybody would be surprised if they did draft a cornerback at 14. I mean, you know you'd be getting a good guy, and depending on who you get, you can get a long, red, long lanky guy. You can get a guy who you can move on the inside and outside, um, but then there's that little injury history that you'd be a little worried about. Um, you like you you you're gonna have some good options there at 14, um, but you could also get a veteran that you know has played in the NFL already. Not saying a rookie can't do it. Not saying a rookie can't come in and shut it down. But so you you, you got options in the secondary. But basically, you need to really retool the secondary and be ready. Yeah, just in case. Now you of course you hope that they come back and play at a high level, and you expect them to come back and play at a high level. Um, but Stay ready so you got to get ready. <laughs> Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up, Megan Graven? Shout out from Mexico. Looking at all the Ravens moves, it looks like they want to stay competitive, but I don't want them to be that, uh, nor contenders. I want them to be champions. 
Um, he said, a just tie for a Nitro ran. Shout out to Nitro. Uh, I want them to be a championship team. I want them to make moves like a championship team, not like, oh, I'm trying to be competitive or stay in the contender class of teams. Those teams don't make it to the big game. They just try to have good regular seasons. And if uh, they make it to the playoffs, they call it a great season. Is it? Or is a great season to win the Super Bowl? Uh, why do you want to stay competitive when teams around the league are making championship moves to help their quarterback achieve greatness? All while Lamar is watching EDC and Hobbs not making those moves to help him get the Super Bowl he wants. No wonder why he doesn't respond to him on a, con on a contract. <laughs> uh, we all know the cap is cap. And great offensive players are not being pursued by Baltimore. And then we excuse ourselves in saying Lamar has no one to rely on other than Hollywood and Mandrews. EDC wants Lamar to cash in so he can say we didn't get you players because of your deal. And Lamar says I'm not falling for that. Get me players and then we talk money. Team keep it clean. Peace out. Mic drop. And he said, P.S. Let's get engraving the 60K before the year ends. Yeah, we'll try to get there. Slow but steady. But um, anyway, appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, like like you ended it with. Yeah, I, I don't see Lamar signing the deal no time soon. I think he want Ravens to prove it to him. And, and Ravens, um, we're going to see. We're going to see. Again, this this question I'm answering it Friday, uh, March 25th at 10.59 a.m. And the Ravens, they've while they've made a couple of moves, and some decent moves like the Marcus Williams, that was a nice one. Um, Morgan Moses, that was a solid one, and then Michael Pierce, that's another solid one. But Ravens, um, they especially on offense, they haven't made that move yet. Um, so we'll see, we'll see because of the AFC, the AFC, but they've been making the moves, they've been making, they've been going wild with it. Um, and I know I always see a lot of people say, oh, well. Psh that's not how you build a championship. Ravens do it their way, and their way's been working. Whoa, 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 whoa. Has it? Has it? Have Ravens been a contender? Have they? You tell me. Have they been mostly having winning seasons? Yes. But have they been a contender? What happens in the playoffs? You tell me. The last question on this episode came from my boy JPD. He said, what are your thoughts on Sashi Brown taking over as a team president uh, for the Ravens? And he... um. He did have a presser yesterday that I just watched today. I hadn't watched it yesterday. Um, and he was very, it was pretty vague. And I mean, I didn't expect him to go into crazy detail or anything like that. But when he talked about his role, what his focus was going to be, um, he said just really learning from the previous president, uh, Cass, before, uh, that, who was obviously the president since, I think, what he said, 2004, something like that. Um, but he said basically just, 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 just to follow his lead because he'd been doing his OJT, that on-the-job training. Um, he said they're really going to, over this next week, they're really going to go into that full transition to where Sashi Brown really takes over. Um, he, I mean, he basically just sounded like he was going to answer to Steve Bishotti. Um, They asked him, was he going to have any uh, any dealings with, like, Lamar Jackson's contract? He said, no, nope. That's, he said, that's all EDC. Uh, he was very, um, when he was asked about the Browns, he just... It sounded like it ended really ugly over there with him in Cleveland. It really did because he did not want to say anything about the Browns at all. Like they asked him about the Browns and he was like, oh, well, no, um, my, my focus is here on the Ravens. My focus is. And we remember the last time at a, at a presser where we heard about um, somebody being asked about a certain something. And then er Eric DeCosta, by the way, Eric DeCosta was asked about a certain somebody. Zadarius Smith and he was like oh no 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 my focus is here on Marcus Williams and Morgan Moses and then a little bit later we found out what the truth was so it, it reminded me with Sashi Brown with his presser it reminded me of that it just sounded like it it was an ugly ending to that relationship similar to Zadarius Smith and the Baltimore Ravens um but anyway he um he talked about the cap and uh, Cass, or the previous president, Cass, he was talking about the cap too. And uh, like people, somebody asked him, as far as all the moves you see people making and stuff, and they spending all this bread and stuff, they were like, What's up with the Ravens? Are the Ravens gonna do something? Like, how you feel about that? And the previous president, um, he was like, He's like, Well, yeah, you see a lot of these teams, they spending all this money, they, they, they making all these moves and whatnot. But he said, Well, it, in a couple years, it's, they're gonna have to pay it. They're going to have to pay that money. It's all going to come back to the cap. So basically, he was letting everybody know, Ravens ain't doing that, basically. 
Um, so I mean, and that's no surprise. We'll see if things change. We'll see, but I, I don't really think anybody expects the Ravens to do what a lot of these other teams are doing. A lot of us hope that they will. A lot of us hope that the Ravens will really like really go for it, but uh, the I don't think the expectation is there for the Ravens to do something like that. Um, but yeah, he just sound like uh with Sashi Brown, he just sound like he just really uh is just really ready to learn. Uh, to learn about the people, to meet people, get to know them. Um, the previous president, President Cass, he was saying that he um, he was saying how he wants. He said the first thing you got to do, you, you got to get people to like you. And he said you can't get people to like you. You can't get them to like you by paying them more money. And I was like, huh. I know that's a little joke. I know it's a little joke. I know a little, oh, a little humor there. Um, but for a lot of these jokes, there's there's always some truth behind them. Um, but yeah, so it, anyway, he, uh, it was, it was super, like, it, the presser was very vague. Um, just an introductory presser to get Sashi to speak to everybody and whatnot. He talked about his time with the Wizards and the, uh, the Mystics. I didn't know that he worked with the Jaguars before. I didn't know that. Um, so yeah. No, I mean, that, that was it. So we'll, we'll see. Like, he, the president, I don't believe they really have a big impact on the football side. I think they're more so the uh, business side, operations and whatnot. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, and, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's all I got from it, really. It wasn't, I didn't really get it as in, like this in-depth press conference where, oh, man, we found out the answer to this question, that question, that question. That. No, it felt like just more him letting his voice be known to everybody and him just... Uh, formally introducing himself to uh, Raven's flock.